Escalation Protocol is the new open world activity Destiny 2 desperately needed, but as those who tried it out right after the campaign can tell you, it is no joke. The bosses are super tanky, tons of enemies, and plenty of one-hit deaths. So let's break it down on what you need to do in order to get through to level 7 and how you can beat it really, really easy. What's going on guys? Sly here back at it with another D2 guide for you and this time we're going to check out Escalation Protocol. My back has finally healed up and I have a lot of catching up to do so stay tuned for tons of guides this week. However, in this video we're going to be taking a look at Escalation Protocol and how you can get through it super fast and how to reach and beat level 7 every single time. So, hope everyone out there is enjoying the Warmind DLC. I'm going to wait a bit before I make my review video because I really do think there are still some things out there that we're missing. But so far, I'm definitely liking the endgame, and I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. Okay, so first, let's talk about getting ready on how you guys are going to beat this. First, you're going to need these things called cash keys. No sense in doing this if you're not going to get any loot. So, cash keys drop in the nightfall, especially on prestige, and also drop for doing adventures on Mars, the raid, and raid layers. You get a couple by doing the campaign and those little endgame missions as well. Now, it takes seven of these blue encrypted cash keys to turn it into a legendary cash key, and you do that over at Anna Bray. Once you participate in Escalation Protocol, it will then unlock simply by playing it and it turns into a decrypted cash key that you can then use on the chest at the end of the level 7 fight. Because otherwise you won't get a chance at the loot, but if you just want to beat it to beat it, then just go ahead and do it. If it's not decrypted yet, simply playing it to get to level 7, it will, for, it will decrypt by the time you get to the chest, so no big deal about that. So now let's move on to how you can do that. Now as you've probably seen, Escalation Protocol is really no joke guys. If you messed around with it right after the campaign, as soon as it opened up, like four or five of you probably couldn't even beat the first boss. Like So first things first, get more people. Try messaging players in your instance and ask them to invite your friends. They can then join up on the random player and that random player can then leave or if he or she wishes they can simply join in with you. Now Mars can only hold nine players at any given time so this might take a while to get all nine players on the same team. Now remember be nice to each other y'all. I mean don't demand that the randoms do as you ask. It's their right to play this game how they want to play it and if they are nice about it then treat them with respect because it's a rare thing these days especially when it comes to online gaming. So now that you're maxed out on all nine players, let's talk about your setup. Now I would recommend to start this when you're around the upper 350s, lower 360s. But there is an exception to this. I would not go any lower than that. Of course, the higher your power level, obviously the better you're going to do. Now these bosses have enormous health pools. I mean like larger than raid boss health pools and enemies spawn non-stop. So you have to use this to your advantage. So what's the best super to use for large clusters of ads, you know, really tight together? Tether with Orpheus Rigs, obviously. This will be your best friend. So first things first, try to get three to four hunters in there. Two at a absolute minimum, but four is the you know the, the good number here. No more than four. And hunters will be the exception to that power level rule. Hunters will be doing as much damage as possible with heavy weapons, obviously, but tethers are the most important thing here. You need to be generating orbs like a madman. So since you can make orbs at any power level and your tether will stick to any enemy, if you're like 345 or upper 340s, then that will be okay. But just be aware that you're going to die pretty easily anything past level 3 just about every time you get shot. So just be aware of that because it will definitely happen. Now the rest of the team will consist of Void Warlocks and Sunbreaker Titans, preferably three Void Warlocks and two Sunbreakers. However, you can skip the Titans altogether if you need to, but having one will help you out a lot. So definitely, at a minimum, one Titan. If you have four Warlocks that are all Void, that's perfectly fine, but you're going to need at least one Titan, preferably two. Now as far as weapons, keep your power level high, but use what you're good with. Sleeper works wonders for the ogres and it can one-shot certain witches. Darcy would be the go-to here, but it is so chaotic and you're getting hit from all sides that I doubt it would really be useful. You'd end up shooting the ground or the air more than, you know, actually enemies. So in its stead, rockets work great as well as shotguns. So try to make sure they are void elements if you can help it. That's pretty important. Now once you have your team together, here is what you need to do, guys. The Titans need to use the top tree of their subclass the one that gives them the solar shoulder charge. When you hit an enemy with this shoulder charge and they don't die, you get a damage buff called melting point. 
Now that was kind of forgotten about until this past week in Destiny 2. I used it a, a lot like in Destiny 1 when all you had to do was simply melee an enemy with a charged melee, but now you have to shoulder charge them. So the two Titans need to have shoulder charges at the ready. The final piece of this puzzle, y'all, Sleeper Simulant and Tractor Cannon. Tractor Cannon being the main focus here. The new Tractor Cannon is great in PvP, tons of fun, and absolutely amazing in PvE. Also, what's great about it is that it can stack with other buffs or debuffs, and there lies the secret to annihilating your bosses very, very quickly. Once the event begins, have the hunters go crazy on ads and gen as many orbs as possible. Just keep tethering over and over and over. You want everyone to have their supers, and if you have four hunters, there will be so many orbs that you can pretty much use your super whenever you feel like it. However, just be sure you have them at the ready by the time the bosses come out. So the secret is simply this. As soon as the bosses are out, there should be orbs absolutely everywhere. Have one titan, shoulder charge the boss, and then immediately start blasting it with tractor cannon. As soon as the titan does this, he or she should call it out, and then everyone use their supers. All three warlocks, throw your nova bombs, tethers, hammers, whatever you have, while that one titan keeps blasting it with tractor cannon. This stacking of a buff and debuff creates massive damage to the bosses and will literally melt them within seconds. As you can see with this ogre here on my team, we just destroy this guy with absolutely zero problems. And that is the key to this, guys. Keep these debuffs and buffs going as long as possible while hunters should tether everything in sight. Now, if it just so happens you miss a tether and it doesn't regen with your Orpheus rigs, then all the other supers should have made some orbs for you by now. Also, it's good to know this is not like Argos where you stack adds and constantly keep tethering them over and over. Once a tether is out, just go ahead and kill everything. There are so many adds within this little activity that you can tether and then kill because they're just going to keep coming and keep spawning and you'll get your super absolutely no problem. Now, one boss is easy, but later on there will be two along with tons of majors to back them up. So, getting close can be tricky at times, but if you have enough tethers and nova bombs coming in, then there shouldn't be any problems at all. When there are two bosses, what you're going to do is focus on one at a time. Have a titan shoulder charge, then immediately blast it with tractor cannon, rein in the supers and sleeper shots, and then move on to the next boss. When you have dual bosses, tether will help calm them down for a bit so you can actually get in close enough and land all your shots as well as critical hits. So add that with melting point and tractor cannons void debuff and again you can just melt these guys as they were if they were red bars like it's that simple guys once you get to the main boss where his health pool is just pretty insane titans will have to take turns shoulder charging and using tractor cannons so that's why it's good to have two of them if you have one titan then have a warlock down there with tractor cannon helping out heavy really should not be an issue due to the overwhelming amount of majors in this encounter now, this will rotate each week for five weeks, so we have no idea what's coming up next, but this week we have a giant ogre at level one, which is what everyone used to get the sleeper quest completed. Then, a super tanky witch, followed by a sword knight, then double giant knights, more ogres, public event, which you have to finish as heroic, more knights, and then finally the level seven boss is another huge ogre with a light mechanic. The mechanic here is that when adds are close to the ogre and within the circle, the ogre gets an immunity from all damage. So you have to keep the adds at bay while consistently doing damage to him. So be sure that the hunters are always shooting tethers, keeping the adds from wandering around, and then try to kill them while they're clustered together because you don't want his immunity shield to keep coming back every time you fire a Nova Bomb. It's a huge waste of damage. And if it happens enough, you might not finish the encounter. But if you have my recommended four hunters, three warlocks, two titans, then you will absolutely fly through this just as easily as my team did. And guys, that is really about it. I mean, be sure to communicate as a team here. That is also really important. Don't forget that in later levels, you have to complete the public event as an heroic event. And if you fail, then you fail Escalation Protocol. Also, once you start getting into the upper levels, those hive shadows start to appear in multiple locations. The best way we split those up was by fire teams. Since you can only have three on patrol, we had three fire teams of three, and everyone just followed each other's fire team to one of the shadows. If you see three people on one, then go ahead and head to the next one. Now, for the last helpful tip, there will be parts of this event where waves of mini bosses come out. They are ultras, but they're not as tanky as like a level boss, but treat them as any other boss. 
shoulder charge, tractor cannon, tether, and tons of Nova bombs. The faster you get through them, the better it is for your team. And don't worry about using too many Nova Bombs, there is no such thing as too many Nova Bombs. If your hunters are doing their job, there should be orbs everywhere. And if there's orbs, pick them up, Nova Bomb, even if it's just a Major or a couple of Majors, the boss, just keep tossing them, tossing them, because if you don't use them, they're going to despawn and only a certain amount of orbs can stay on the map at once. So just keep using them, you're, if your hunters are doing your job, like I said, you'll have plenty to go around. But that is it my friends escalation protocol is pretty fun i mean i was having a blast with it and while it was intimidating at first it becomes fun when you can pretty much super these bosses away in mere seconds so hope these tips help you and i hope you guys can reach and beat level 7 with your friends but when you use this method i have no doubt that you'll be successful week one drops the class item week two arms three legs week four chest piece then the fifth and final week before it starts rotating back to the first is going to be the helmet now i didn't get the shotgun this week so i'm kind of sad about that but now that makes it so i have to come back and try it again for later either way i will definitely be grinding this out to get the entire set of armor and weapons but that is it for me compadres as always thank you so much for watching and i hope you learned something new Feel free to check me out on Twitter or Facebook, Sly Nation, Sly Nation Gaming. Now that my back is better, I can finally sit up and walk around and not be stuck in bed all day. I'll be catching up with all my Warmind videos, so be sure to keep an eye out for more Warmind videos in the very, very near future. But until then, this is your dude Sly, and I'll catch you all next time. <laughs>